responsibility to teach our children. Leave this conference with a new mentality that God is depending upon you, not on a casual basis. Look at the society we are. If we don't teach these children about God, what will happen? Means coming back to God. It means being right with Him again. It means getting forgiveness for wandering away. I'm tired of pretense. Of judgment, of sin, because they don't believe in me. 
It's time to walk in the power of the Holy Ghost. Put my slide there for them. Amen. It's a, it's a short time because I really want you to experience power. So I say it is time for me to experience power. So it's not about talk this morning, it's about power. Amen. And I have five or uh, twelve points here. I'm just going to make it snappy. From uh, Acts um, Romans chapter 8. We read the first part the other time, and now we're fu fully finish it. Number one. How, what does it mean to walk in the power of the Holy Ghost? It is not to walk in condemnation, but in the Spirit. So I say, I will no more walk in condemnation. Say it as if you meant it. You know, many of us have given our lives to Jesus, but we walk in what? Condemnation. That's why we are not growing. We begin where we were this last year, 20 years ago, when we are not born again, that's where we are. You are not there. Hallelujah. This one didn't die in vain. You didn't hear me. I said, This one did not die in vain. Amen. Someone say, Amen. Amen. I said, This one did not die in vain. Amen. It did not die in vain. Amen. It died to change your life. It died to change my life. There is no, therefore, no more condemnation. Stop condemning yourself. You committed adultery. You committed this one. If you have given your life to Jesus, stay focused. Someone says, stay focused. Stay focused. Every line will tell you, stay tuned. Don't go away. Have you had the challenge? Say, yeah, like all of them. They say, stay what? Stay tuned. If you have given your life to Jesus, stay what? Stay tuned, stay focused. Stop living in the past. Number two, it's not to walk in the flesh. Don't allow the dictates of the flesh, even though you are staying tuned, don't allow the dictates of the flesh direct you. Now that you are giving your life to Christ, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Somebody needs for me to do. We are crucified with Christ, nevertheless we need. Yes? Yes. We have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, for Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave his life for me. Amen. So you are, you are no more walking in the flesh. Someone said, no more walking in the flesh. Oh, what does it mean to walk in the flesh? The flesh will tell you, you can't go to church, you can't pray, you can't give, you can't do this. That is the flesh. The flesh tells you, take care of my body. Take care of my what? All the money you have belongs to you. The flesh tells you, this is the way to go. Go and commit adultery. Go and commit uh, uh, sin. Go and kill. That's the flesh. You are no more flesh what? Driven. Somebody say, I'm no more flesh driven. I'm no more flesh driven. You are not walking in the power of the Holy Ghost when all you do is about your what? Flesh. Flesh tells you go and drink beer. You are looking for beer. Go and drink alcohol. You are looking for alcohol. Go and kill. You are looking for... No! You are a new person. I'm now crucified. All your past has been crucified. Somebody say amen. amen. Number three, it is to run away from anything synonymous with sin. Anything you know will provoke God. Anything you know will not make God happy. You run away from them. That's what it means to walk in the power of the Holy Ghost. I tell young couple, when they want to marry, you must not have sex before marriage. Amen? Amen. How do you prevent that? You behave as if your parents are what? Are there when you are caught. Amen? Amen. Hello? Is somebody in church? These ones are married. There are many who are not married. This message is for you. You don't walk in the what? In the flesh. 
you don't commit sin. You don't say because you are dating him, then you must sleep with together. No. How do you overcome that? You have the consciousness that if my mother is sitting down here, I can't be sleeping with the doctor when I'm not married. Am I speaking? Yes. Am I speaking? Yes. But we behave as if God is not there. God is there. God is what? Yeah. He's there. Your parents are not there. God is there. Hallelujah. Amen. I said hallelujah. Yeah. Number four. It is not to be carnally minded, but spiritually minded. You are picking up the spirits. You are ruled by the what? By the spirits. It's time to pray. You pray. It's time to study the world. You study the world. We have a generation that want the power of God without the attributes of the power of God. Not to be carnally minded. But spiritually minded. We have read about Peter. We have read about Paul. We have read about all these apostles. What makes the difference? Why are they able to do miracles? Talk to me. Hello? Why? Welcome. I said, welcome. Is that all right? Do you know about Paul? Somebody we call Paul in the Bible. Why was he able to do miracles? God gave you the power of God. That's a smart one. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Why was Paul able to do miracles? He walked in the power of God. You guys are more smarter than your pastor. <laughs> you are dodging the question. Amen. Yes, Nicholas. Anointed Nicholas. Why was Paul able to walk in the power of God? All these people. They were spiritually minded. Yes, what does it mean to be spiritually minded? That's what I'm trying to get to you. They were always in church. Hello? They were always praying. They were always fasting. Hello? They were always motivated to do the things of what? Of God. In Acts chapter 3, they said, as Peter was going to church, not going to club, hello, not going to party, but going to what? Going to church. So he could say, silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I give to in the name of Jesus. Why? Because he was not carnally minded. He was spiritually minded. In the workers' class, we read that they, he said they followed the doctrine. They were moving from house to house. They were praying. They were not shouting on phone, wasting their energy on Facebook, on things that are irrelevant. We this a generation that in one week they will not read the Bible. You want to walk in power, but you are not. You are carnally minded. You are social media what? Minded. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I said glory be to God. Hallelujah. If you want to walk in power, to walk in power is that you are only ghost driven. When you wake up, what comes to your mind is how to pray. Pray for your pastor. Pray for your nation. Pray for your father. Pray for your mother. Pray for your husband. Pray for your wife. Don't spend five hours in the day eh, on WhatsApp from WhatsApp. What did you call the other one? Snapchat, Instagram, eh? Twitter, Facebook. Oh my goodness. This generation has occupied us with evil. All kinds of languages. How can you walk in power when you go from all kinds of things? Oh my goodness. Let's go. Let's go. Number five, it is to have the Holy Spirit. For without the Holy Spirit, it's impossible to walk in the power of God. 
is that you are consciously asking God to fill you with power. To fill you with anointing. Something happens in your spirit. You wake up, Lord, fill me with power today. I told you there are three prayers you must always say it when you wake up in the morning. What are the three? Who remembers? Number one, protect me. Number one, do what? Because if you are dead, you are dead. You are not hearing me. Protection is number one. God, as I'm going out today, do what? Holy Spirit, do what? There will be asked as I'm talking now, some people are dying. The youth were here yesterday, I asked them three things that must occupy your mind. God, family, education. Three things you must include in your morning devotion, my sister. Welcome. What are they? Number one, God, do what? Let me not die today. Let my legs not be cut off. Let my head not be cut off. Protect me, protect my wife, protect my children, protect my children, protect my husband. Lord, you are protect me. Number two is power. Is what? Power. power to do. Some people who slept yesterday, they have no power to wake up and get up. They have no power to talk anymore. They have no power to run anymore. They were running yesterday. You need power. You need power. You need You need You need power of the Holy Ghost. This was saying you need power. Have you seen people who committed rape, who stole? One day, when they come, what they say? The devil led me. Why are you allowing the devil to lead you when the Holy Ghost can lead you? Because you are powerless against the devil. When you have power with God, when the devil is coming, you say, Satan, listen to me. The way Jesus was tempted is the way you are being tempted. Why do you think Jesus came? To show you how to deal with the devil. Somebody said to show us how to deal with the devil. You will tell the devil, say, it is written. That's why you must be spiritually minded. You are, you, are, you are building yourself in the Holy Ghost with the word of God. Number three, part of your prayer in the morning is wisdom. Somebody said wisdom. wisdom. Okay, let's move forward now. I don't want to digress. I was just telling you, you need the Holy Ghost. You need the power of the Holy Ghost. Every morning, ask for the power of the Holy Ghost. The way you see marriage breaking. Hello? Have you seen marriage breaking? I was listening to the radio during the week. He said 50% of marriages in our time do what? Break. Those who do second marriage, 80% of those marriages do what? Break. Those who do third marriage, 98% of third marriage is do what? Break. Why is marriage breaking? Because there is no power. Your friend, your husband, your wife is behaved. What do you do? Lord, deliver my wife. Lord, deliver my husband. When you come back, I will show you today that you know husband. Who doesn't know you are the husband? Then you are there with faces. I mean, when you are there, I just saw you join me up. So it's not just God. We saw everybody. When you are married, they say, in the presence of God, I what? So don't, don't, just tell me you are my wife. You are, I already know. Everybody knows. Your parents know. Glory be to God. Walk in power. Say walk in power. Number seven. It is to be led by the Spirit. It's not just to have the Holy Spirit. It's to be led by the Spirit. It's to allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. You want job? Let the Holy Spirit lead you. You want to live in Canada? You want to live here or there? Let the Holy Spirit, not your flesh. Not your flesh. If you are going by 401 now from here, from West, if you go east, you will reach Oraba, isn't it? If you keep going. If you go from that west, 
this way. Can you get to all of them? Eh? You are going the opposite. If you are using GPA, they will say, make a legal u turn Make what? Make a legal u turn Because you are going the wrong direction. He's telling you, the way you are going, you can't get to Orawa. You will get to London, you will get to all those ones. You will, you will be born in gas. May the Lord give you this generation. You allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. Your, the Holy Spirit is your GPS. God's plan of what? Salvation. The Holy Spirit is your leader. I'm talking to you about how to walk, what it means to walk in the Holy Ghost. Number eight is to receive the spirit of adoption, whereby you cry out, my Father. To walk in the Holy Ghost is to know that you have a Father who is there for you. You have a Father you can cry to. Children, look at me. I'm no more going to school. Amen? I got PhD in 1995. So I'm not sitting for exam now. You are the one sitting for exam. You need the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, read for me John chapter 14, verse 26. If you want to read, if you want to take an exam, that is one scripture you must memorize. You must walk in. That is what it means to walk in the Holy Ghost. You cry out, my Father. Yes, read it loud. No, John 14, 26. But the advocate, the, the helper, yes, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things. I will remind you of all things. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do we need God. Psalm 121. My help will come from above. Who never sleeps? But you need to ask him. Hallelujah. Amen. I say hallelujah. Amen. I say hallelujah. Amen. It is to be an heir of God. You have the consciousness, I'm a joint heir. I have a place with God. That there is not just a human being, it's a supernatural human being. Because I'm walking in the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm a joint heir. We are in joint business with God. Hallelujah. Amen. You are in joint what? Business. When Jesus was here, the Bible says he had a foster parent by the name of Joseph. And one day they went to Jerusalem. And uh, they were doing taxes and so on. Tax has always been there. Tax. Tax problem has always been what? Since the days of Jesus, they were going to what? They were going to Jerusalem for what? Tax purposes. We are looking for tax return. <laughs> Amen. Just in financial circle, we say two things are certain. Death and tax. If you know the way Siamese is pursuing me now with any task, only God will deliver me. <laughs> Say, God, deliver my pastor. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm enjoying here with God, He will deliver me. Amen. I say, He will deliver me. Amen. What does it mean to work in the Holy Ghost to manifest God's power in a peculiar way? That is what I want you to take away from here this morning. You must work in power. You must see miracles happening. Happening in your life. Happening in your life. You must lay your hands on the sick and they will recover. Peter is gone. David is gone. Peter and my boy is gone. Judas is gone. All these ones are gone. You are now on stage. This is your time. Do you know why they are running around? And everybody that is running around, they are looking for prophets. They are looking for what? They are looking for prophets. We had a man of God in our church in those days, Apostle in Gabon. He said, when he finishes ministry, some people will come to him and say, Papa, what do you see for me? He said, he will tell them, what will I see for a sinner that has not repented? He said, he's going to hell. <laughs> you are living in sin, he said, what do I see for you? You know you are doing forward. Like, what is it for you? 
cultivate God's presence. Make sure your environment is God induced. There are so many young boys, particularly from the Nigerian uh, 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 music space. All they do is make money, leading people to what? Bad lifestyles. Every song is about sex. And the young ones are catching fever. Somebody is making money, is leading you to hell. Oh my goodness. And the way you spend the money as your what? Your front. How do you walk in the path of the Holy Ghost? Cultivate God's what? Yeah. DJ, I mean, is it DJ? Yeah. Uh -huh. Make sure the music you are listening to is not sexy oriented. Are you listening to me? If you are 13, 14, 16, and all you are looking for, I love you, I love you, and you are not talking of loving Jesus, sorry for you. Sorry for you. Before you go into that day, you'll be masturbating, watching pornography, because of music that does not help your life. Thank God there's no more CD, uh, everything is uh, what? I tune, I want, I something. In those days when there were CDs and tape, the back side of those songs are satanically what? Driven. All those songs. Listen, I know what I'm talking about. We went to Nigeria to do international gathering of Hebrews conference. And then we were listening to the radio. And then they were interviewing one boy about his music. They said, you made this music 10 years ago. It did not sell. How come every Nigerian is now looking for this song? Ah. He laughed. He said, I slept in the graveyard for seven days. Bear me. Bear me. Those songs are to drive you to hell. You will not go to hell. Yeah. Cultivate God's presence. Listen to Godly music. Read the word. The Bible says, look for me. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. I'm talking about walking in the power of God and how to walk in the power of God. He says, sing it to yourself, psalms and what? Beams. Let's move forward. Number three, become an equal believer. Somebody said, become an equal believer. An equal believer. Any moment from now, we are going to have another international gathering of people's conference. Did you hear you shout? Number one is that what? You become born again, and then number one is what? To read the word of God. Somebody say, read the word of God. Yeah. Put it on top for them. Let them not see me. Let them see the word. B, pray and pray in tongues. And be sure you wake up, mask up, polobo, so polobo, shalia. Evil sickness will run away. Have you listening to me? Am I talking to somebody? I said, am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to somebody? Mark Kuria, stand up wherever you are. Begin to speak in tongues right now. Begin to declare the counsel of God. Rabba Shakandelebo, Rekebo Sakondo Robo Soria, Rabas Kadeke Rebo Soka, Yekebo Seke. Pray in the Spirit. 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 Shaka Neke Rebo Soka, Mala Sande Rebo, Rekebo Seke Rila Boske Rebo Shoya. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus, let me pray. Please be seated. Number three, fellowship with the brethren. I see many of you coming to church now. Please give the Lord a big hand. Give the Lord a big hand. Don't stop this. Don't let people drift you away with words of that does not help your life. Stay where God is. And God is here. I didn't tell you. 
I say God is here. Amen. It's not my word. Genesis 28. He said, better is the gate of what? Heaven. The household of God. God lives here and visits other churches. <laughs> well, it's in the Bible. Glory be to God. Better is where God lives. Why will you be looking for where you will be a visitor? Where God can perchance stay there. But where God can be some ghost is coming back here. Keep the Lord in the air. I said Jesus is coming back here. I said Jesus is coming back here. Shout hallelujah. You just permit the Holy Ghost to go to this one, go this one. But this is his house. It was not bad. This, this is where he eats. Glory be to God. That's why when Jesus comes to Bethany, he stays in the house of what? Lazarus, Mary, and who? And Martha. Because he lives there, when challenges came, they said, Sir, this is your house. It's very neat. One of us have what? Challenges. He said, There is no challenge. If that's my house, challenge is no challenge. Mm. Yeah. That's how God. They say, I'm telling you, the sickness is not unto death. Where Jesus is, there's no death. You will not die. Amen. And if you declare the cancer of God, and then Jesus, and then Lester was eventually died. And when he was coming to his house, somebody said he was coming to his house. Somebody said he was coming to his house. This one didn't mean house. He said the folks have holes in beds have this, have no place. He lives with what? Matter, Mary, and what? Lazarus. So he was coming to his house. Oh God, that, that's your friend who you are always joking to them. He's dead now. He said, Did I not tell you? I am the resurrection. I'm the Lord. He said, Yes, sir. God, we also know a little bit of theology. When we get to heaven, you will be there as the resurrection. He said, no, I carry power. I carry the resurrection and life is what? Is here. Somebody said, Jesus is here. Jesus Somebody said, Jesus is here. Jesus May you walk in power oh of the Holy Ghost. He said, I have the resurrection. When everybody died, they are coming to meet me in heaven. So I can do whatever I want to do in heaven. I can do it right now. He said, take me to where Lazarus was what? Dead. Oh, sir. Oh, don't understand. It's four days. Your friend is thinking. In fact, the owner is amazing. He said, Do you want to follow me? Do you want to take me there? Right somewhere where you are this morning. I see Jesus entering your life. Yeah. I see Jesus entering your life. Yeah. I see Jesus entering your life. Yeah. Entering your situation. Yeah. And he got there. He said, Roll away the stone. I command every stone blocking the blessing to be run away this morning. I said to be run away this morning. He said, Lazarus, do what? Come out. I command everything that is dead in you by the power and the blood of Jesus to come out this morning.
So I saw somebody sick, and God used me to heal him. Are you hearing me? That's when the Lord was working in what? With power. Why we had a killing? No, I'm asking you. Why we had a do what? The headache has not been born. The headache that we killed at that has not been what? Has not been manufactured. Glory be to God. The world is here. In those days, we worked with LNPC. And because of so many energy uh, sapping activities, and we get tired and then go to the hospital. And then they will write malaria plus plus. Meaning three levels of what? Malaria. And my wife said, let's branch in the what? In the pharmacy. I said, to do what? He said, to take prescription. I said, that's not why I came. I came to know what is wrong with me. That's it. The doctor has done their job. Then I now go to my room and say, God, I hear there is malaria first cause. Where are those angels in charge of the moving malaria? He said, oh, I'm dispatching them right now. And then he dispatches them. You are not hearing it. I'm 62 plus. He's still dispatching them. I'm never taking APC in my life. APC, medication, no. Because there is power in God. Amen. I'm telling you, it's, we are not impressing me or God by saying God heal you. God puts his power in your life to heal those who have not known him. Do you know why miracles happen more with unbelievers? Because without signs, they will not believe. That's why you are complaining. Oh, now I'm paying my tithe, but now something is happening. Well, because God expects you to deal with that. Glory be to God. Amen. Time is gone. Okay. Intentionally active faith. Number three or five, prayer and fast. So I say prayer and fast. Yes. Last Friday, it was me and Pastor John that was in church to pray. In a month of walking in the power of Holy Ghost, all of you are here now. They said there is prayer meeting. You are never there. How can you walk in power? Tell me. Tell me how can you walk in power without prayer? Matthew 17 to 20 said, How be it? This cannot happen. You can't walk in the power of the Holy Ghost by good face. It is by power. It is by prayer. But I in one of those mighty men of God in Nigeria. He says, when you see miracle on stage, it doesn't happen there. It happened yesterday night in the place of prayer. You want to see miracle in your life? Pray. You want to see miracle in your marriage? Pray. Can you listen to me, young man, young woman? The family that stays together, that prays together, do what? Stay together. You want this man to succeed? When it's not there, you stay in the room. You lock the place. You begin to prophesy. You begin to anoint him. You begin to prophesy to him. And that is what will happen. Yeah. When your wife is not there, you lock the place. You begin to prophesy to her. So can he go scare him. When the two of you now wake up together, can you imagine what will happen? When you now hold yourself and you now begin to pray, the devil is in trouble. Yeah. The devil is in trouble. Yeah. Listen. Why am I just breaking? Because there are so many holes that are defenseless. Prayer is a defense. Prayer is what? It's a barricade. There's a fire of the Holy Ghost. Glory be to God. Amen. All right. The last one. Add other ingredients. Add other what? How many of you have cooked food before? Mama, congratulations. Have you ever cooked before? <laughs> very very interesting. God bless you. This is your food and made that to look like that. Make it to look so well. Glory be to God. Amen. Tell me what you used to cook. Palm oil, eh? salt, pepper, water. One of the main ingredients, like uh, bokotor. 
fish and those things. Amen. Rise up on your feet this morning. Turkey. You want to have the Holy Ghost, there are things you must add. Someone said there are things I must add. In all that I've said, there are things you know. The way you want your soul to be determines on you. Amen. If you add water and pepper and soap and, uh, and oil, sorry. Will you not have soup? You will have soup, but even your enemy will say, is this soup? But when you have all those compliments, are you listening to me? From, from outside, somebody will say there is uh, somebody cooking here. When your life is full of ingredients of God, from outside, they will say, this one, you can't mess up with him. This one is a child of God. My gospel, yeah, read for me. Read for me, read for me, read for me. Uh, 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 uh. First, Peter. Second Peter chapter. Yes, Second Peter chapter 1. 4 and 5. Give it to me quickly. That is your ingredient. You begin to ask for it right now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Exceeding precious promises that by this he might partake as of the what? Divine nature. You are carrying a new nature. The nature of God. That by this he might be partake of the divine nature. How do you escape the corruption that is what? In the world too. Yes? That's fine. Beside this now, now that you are a child of God, now that you are believing, now that you are praying, add to the giving all what? Add what? Virtue. I mean, that woman has read the uh, 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 Proverbs at one here. If you have not, go back. Amen. If we explain to you what virtue is, he said, add virtue, add character, add a lie that. When your husband sees you, he said, my, 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 my. Thank God for the wife I married. She was made on Monday morning. Yes, sir. When God was fresh. <laughs> Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And to virtue, no. You keep yourself with the knowledge of God. Not chemical engineering. That's good for your office. But you need the knowledge of God. That's your soul, yes? Go to the next one, please. Add to virtue knowledge. And to knowledge, what? Okay. That one is me square. <laughs> temperance. Add to knowledge, what? <laughs> what is temperance? Self-control. Somebody has just said something to you. Say, me? This is kind of, you can't talk to me like that. You are better keep quiet. Hello? One scripture you must know. Proverbs 15, a soft answer turneth away wrath. I'm not saying it should be a wrong thought, but when your husband is boiling, darling, I still love you. Don't say, eh, eh, so, so what? So, you will receive a slap. <laughs> that's not what you mean, but that's what we get because the man has ego. Man has what? Ego. God will deliver us from ego. Yeah. <laughs> like men have ego. Man, it's an ego. Oh, it's ego. Ego. Oh, thank you. Thank you. These are generations of vegan. The want to pronounce it. In our time, it was ego.
But all of us, all people, we want them in Gua, 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 Gua. But what's your problem? It's not all your marriage. Glory be to God. Let them have patience. And those of you who are just coming to church, have patience. You are believing God for a house. You just came to Canada yesterday. Now you must build your house tomorrow. No! Someone said patience. Someone said patience. Someone said patience. Stop jumping from church to church looking for fake miracles. That's how you fall into victims. Victims. People dupe you and manipulate your life. Because you can't, you don't know there is a process. Who can get pregnant and after three months say, God, let this child come out? He won't leave. Glory be to God. And Godliness. And the next, and next one, you can, see the, you can see the ingredients now. Brotherly what? A brotherly kindness. Shout hallelujah. The man of God came here last Sunday. He said, All you need is brotherly. Brotherly kindness and what and share it. Begin to bless me for the Lord is the Bible says, they that know their Lord shall be strong and they shall do exploit. There is no point uh, being a lukewarm Christian. As a matter of fact, in Revelation, the Lord says, you are either hot or cold, but to be lukewarm, I will spool you out. So if you are watching this telecast, please jettison the shaky mentality. Embrace the ego mentality. Be a solid Christian. Be a dependable Christian that people can emulate. In your marriage, in your business, in your career, live for God. Let others that are coming. You know, egos don't live on this uh, below. They live high. You know, be somewhere that people can see you on the top and say, I want to be like this one. I want my marriage to be like this person's marriage or this couple's marriage and so on. Not fighting and doing all kind of things. And also, for those who for any reason, you have not known the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, it is a free gift. I encourage you to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Whatever we do here, the judgment is coming. Nobody lives forever. And one day we come. Nobody knows that day. I am believing God and praying that God, when I leave this place, I will make eternal life. And I don't want you also to go to hell. And the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. And uh, the Christian life is lived like this. How do you become an ego believer? Number one, you give your life to Jesus. Number two, you are committed to reading the word of God. Number three, you are prayerful. Number four, you witness the word of God. Number five, you fellowship. And number six, you give, you preach the gospel. When you do this habitually, you become an ego believer. You become solid. You become a reference point. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name.